YouTube was it going? The Goat House is back. Today, I got 10 NFL players that could be prime trade candidates here for these next couple weeks and players to keep an eye on. For each player, I got their value in my opinion. I got landing spots and I got my final prediction. Ended up making some bold picks here, of course. But each of these roster cut dates will, I think, include some trades. Just like that first one we had. There were some minor trades. You know, Packers and Giants swapping corners. A couple of trades out there. And uh, it's because teams, you know, look out, look for uh, potential trade partners before they cut or move on from these players. So they're going to happen. And more holes are created. More needs are created. So uh, really excited to break this down. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. We're kind of playing all along already on Twitter. Uh, Preseason predictions on Twitter. Constant NFL updates. Constantly talking during live games. Go check it out. It's on your screen. Link in the description and comments. Uh, and smash that like. And subscribe button be much appreciated. Full NFL coverage here. Weekly picks, score predictions, power rankings, a lot more. Join us. Here's our Twitter. Again, constant updates. There's preseason picks on here for week two. We got the first game. Um, I'll, I'll pin a link in the comments directly to those picks. So check it out. Give us a follow while you're there. First one, Gardner Minshew. Uh, you know, it, it was kind of odd that the Jags were, you know, Urban Meyer not really – He's messing with us a little bit, you know, not really naming a starter. They'll kind of split reps, you know, Trevor Lawrence isn't locked in, even though he's kind of locked in. And really the only reason for that, quite obvious, is he's trying to kind of grow the trade value for Gardner Minshew so they can move on from him. Uh, I, you know, to me, six round pick value, you know, if a team's pretty desperate for a, a solid backup, maybe fifth um, landing spots, these might, might seem a little random, but... The Bengals, you know, the whole thing with Joe Burrow getting injured last year and kind of I, I think he's going to be fine, but kind of in his own head a little bit early in training camp, kind of getting out of that funk, good news. They could use a better backup. I do think Minshew kind of fit, uh, you know, Zach Taylor's offense as well, so that would make sense. The Cowboys' backup situation is pretty rough. Last year was pretty good with Andy Dalton. Now it's pretty rough. Dak had that broken ankle, and then, you know, he had that soldier sh shoulder injury. Uh, it sounds like he's going to be okay. You still worry about it a little bit, and you would like to get better in terms of a backup in Seattle. Um, you know, the, Russell Wilson's a very healthy quarterback, so maybe this is a little more of a wild card. But Geno Smith gets a concussion. He hasn't been too reliable as the backup when they, you know, looking at preseason mainly. So, and I think Minshew could fit. You know, the only thing, you know, the, the only thing maybe lacking the deep ball, but. Other than that, um, some similarities can move outside the pocket, escape the pressure, could run if needed. Um, so that would be – there's really not a ton of teams. That's why I'm predicting no trade because, you know, the, the first the Jags might be looking for a fifth-round pick or better, of course, and um, I don't think anybody's going to offer that, and the value ends up sticking around a sixth-round pick. And the Jags may say, eh, we'll, we'll just keep them at that price. But at the same time, there's not too many teams now. You know, once upon a time, we thought maybe a team like the Broncos, but now they got Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater battling it out. Locke looks pretty good. So they're off the board. So there's not too many teams that's like dying. I mean, me throwing their picks at, at, the, at the Jaguars here uh, to take Gardner Minshew. So, you know, to me, the Cowboys, I would really like him as a backup there. I mean, pretty important to get somebody um, that would make the most sense, a little thin on the cap, but it's not like he's, you know, a big cap charge or anything. So, but I'm thinking no, no trade for those reasons I explained. Uh, how about Sony Michelle? Uh, I went a little bold here at my prediction. Sony Michelle, you know, I think the value could be a fourth round pick, but teams looking for a starting running back, perhaps, uh, you know, maybe they give up a third round, you know, because he's still pretty damn talented. Uh, first couple years in the league looked really good. That that Super Bowl run they had, he was dominant in the playoffs. You know, I still think he has that. Um, landing spots, really, it's just two for me. I have some wild cards there. That's why the two are underlined. The Rams, Cam Akers goes down, obviously. They have Daryl Henderson uh, in the Falcons, uh, which I was su I'm still surprised they didn't grab one of those top guys in the draft. They do like Mike Davis, but Sonny Michelle, absolutely, I think he's better than Mike, Dav Mike Davis. You know, last year's statistics may go against that, but I, I'm going to stand by it. Um, and I think he really fits Arthur Smith's scheme there, and I, I, the Falcons could really benefit from that. Uh, they're, they're very weak in terms of the backups, too. You know, I'm looking for a backup. Uh, Panthers could use, you know, a guy that can run in, inside, you know, next to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, the Chargers could use one of those types of guys, too. They have a list of running backs, but they could get better in terms of that physical style back. In the Giants, you know, there was some reports that Bar maybe Barkley won't be good to go by week three. It's very crucial they have a key backup. I, you know, they do like Devontae Booker, and then they get better at Michelle, but those are kind of wild card teams. 
I'm going to say the Rams. I mean, the Rams, it's a little bold. You know, I'm not counting on it to happen, but for all these 10 players, I wasn't going to sit here and put no trade, no trade, no trade. You know, I think it's very possible, so that's why I put it here. Um, you know, with Daryl Henderson's health concerns, he's very solid. They like him, and they probably they may start him. It kind of might be a 50-50 backfield there. Maybe some weeks Michelle would start if, this was, if they traded for him, but... Um, yeah, their depth is pretty brutal, and they're trying to win the Super Bowl. You know, it'd be surprising if, really, to me, if they just went into the season with what they got because they were as soon as they got Stafford, they were looking at every opportunity to add players because this is it, Super Bowl or bust these next couple of years. So, um, you know, and they need that guy that can run inside. They need that guy in case Henderson goes down to carry the load. Um, you know, so I think they would like Sony Michelle. So I'd look out for the Rams here for him and maybe the Patriots wouldn't trade him because they, they you know he was so good in that playoff run that one year they drafted him high because they you know they think highly of him maybe they want to keep keep him but you look they like Damian Harris Damian Harris gonna be a starter they use you we know how much they use James White they you know the Buccaneers tried to get him the Patriots made sure they brought him back Ramondre Stevenson looked pretty damn good in preseason they like him uh they have J.J. Taylor who's looking pretty good in preseason as well so they could afford to do this they may, you know, if it's a fourth round pick value, they may, eh, we might just hold on. We'll just hold on to them, you know. So the Rams are a team, you know, that could be a running back away, you know, a healthy running back away, perhaps. Um, this could be a trade deadline type of guy. Yeah, if somebody's running back actually goes down. So we'll, we'll see. A couple of receivers, and another Patriots guy here, Nikhil Harry. Uh, I think around a six round pick. It felt like they already tried to shop him. He has to be traded. They kind of. You know, they weren't desperate. They kind of looked around a little bit. I'm sure they made some calls. Teams made some calls to them. And, you know, it was probably hard to match up on the value. Teams probably wanted to give up a swap picks or a seventh-round pick. Uh, and the Patriots, you know, they just drafted in the first round not too long ago. So it probably didn't match up in terms of the value. Heard he played pretty well, and I've, I've seen some moments there in training camp where he's played pretty well. Uh, last night's preseason game, actually, he had a tough catch. He had a drop on that, though, and he hurt his shoulder. So we'll see what, what comes from that. That could prevent a trade as well. Uh, but this could spark back up because, you know, the Patriots do like a number of receivers they have, including, a, uh, you know, well, Jacoby Myers, who's been on the team, but they had Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne, and they're going to use the tight ends quite a bit uh, if they're healthy. Uh, I'd say the Falcons. The Falcons are lacking in the receiver depth department. Uh, the Lions could use another receiver. Uh, 49ers, yeah, not too much depth. It's pretty much just two starters with Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and you worry about the health of Samuel. And the Saints uh, lost Michael Thomas for a chunk of the season and could use receivers anyway. So those are teams I would look out for that also could be fits. There's other teams that could use a receiver. You know, I thought these were the best fits here. Uh, prediction, I, I just think no trade. And then it kind of brings up, uh, the question, will he be cut? Will he make the team? I don't know if they're that deep, I guess, in receiver. where They're, they're going to need that fourth and fifth receiver there, which I think would be Nikhil Harry. He could be injured more longer than we think, so that could prevent it as well. I'm just thinking no trade. He just won't be able to match up on value with teams. Uh, you know, and Teams aren't, aren't going to be dying to get him, even though I, I still think he has some upside here. He's a first-round pick for a reason. Another receiver, James Washington, and the value of around a fourth round pick, expiring deal. So could it could it be a fifth? That'd be a. I would I would love to see a team go for James Washington. I'm I'm a fan. Um, yeah, fifth round pick would be a steal. Remember uh, the Steelers traded for Joe Sherbert. Maybe they Sh Schobert. Uh, maybe they maybe they trade away James Washington to get a pick back. Perhaps it's not like they lost a you know a major pick. Uh, but they are missing some picks in the mid to late rounds next year. Landing spots, you know, similar teams. We just talked about Nikhil Harris. I threw the Chiefs in there. A absolute epic fit. Perfect fit with the Chiefs. They need more speed. They need somebody else that gets separation. He fits that fits that team in every category. The Chiefs may pick up the phone. They may have already done it. I and mean, they would love to have James Washington. I don't know if the Steelers help out the Chiefs. I really, I really don't know if I can see that. You know, maybe if it's like a third round pick, then perhaps. I don't think the Chiefs do that. Um, I, I just don't see them helping him out. Uh, but I really consider that because it's such a good fit. Um, it would boost the Chiefs too. It helped them a lot. A serious contender already. And I was back and forth. You know, I'm, I was really liking the and the Lions probably stay put because you know this is kind of a win now trade because one year deal. So the Lions probably a wild card in this category. I was really thinking the Saints, the 49ers, the Falcons. They all make a lot of sense. Uh, the Falcons. 
they, you know, again, they, they, I mean, they have Calvin Ridley, big time receiver. They have Russell Gage, who's kind of their number two receiver. They have Pitts and Hurst. We're going to see them use the two tight ends. We're going to see them use Pitts as a receiver. So they may view themselves as, as set because those are four weapons right there in that style offense. They're just really lacking in terms of the actual receiver position depth. So I kind of narrow it down, and I would love the fit there as well. So keep that one in mind, but I really narrow it down to the 49ers and the Saints. The Saints are trying out receivers. They're trying to sign Kevin White. They know they need receivers, and I think he would fit Jameis Winston ball perfectly um, You know, in terms of the downfield passing game. you got the speedster, that home run ability here. Um, you know, so I, I think they would be interested. They're also scrambling for other positions, you know, looking for corners as well. So we'll see what they do. Uh, the 49ers, they, they need somebody, I, I think, pretty desperately as well. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, that is a big time duo. Very talented. Love it. Samuel has the injury concern. They don't, you know, they have, they have Muhammad Sanu, still solid, but they don't got much depth at all back there in terms of, I mean, they got guys, you know, Richie James, Sherfield. They got they got guys that I'm, I'm sure they can play, but get a guy that's going to get out and get, get production. I think he fits Trey Lance ball. You know, Trey Lance has got that deadly deep ball. He's got the arm strength. He needs more of that home run hitter. I mean, he's got it in Ayuk, the home run in it downfield. I think you could use another one, so... And the 49ers realize that. They've kind of been monitoring some receivers, but you know some of the ones that were available weren't maybe not the sure things or the greatest fits. They were just another body. Uh, you know, So I think Washington's a pretty good fit uh, for them. So we'll, we'll see. But this is a team that probably doesn't need a long list of receivers. They're probably going to have two receivers out there You know, with Kittle. They're going to pound the football. So that could be a reason against it. Maybe the Saints do it. But uh, you know, and it came out that he asked for a trade, and then they kind of denied it. And then it was actually yesterday, I believe, that um, the way James Washington spoke on it was okay. He might actually ask for a trade. You know, um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it kind of, he kind of got that that feeling there. So he could be dealt. Steelers are trying to win now, so they probably want to keep him. Uh, but they could get that pick back, and they have a pretty good receiver room as it is. Zach Ertz, got a few Eagles guys we're going to talk about. Fifth round pick, um, you know, it really felt like he was going to be dealt a while ago, early offseason, but they just, they were asking too much. Uh, teams didn't want to, you know, they felt like they had to trade for him, then pay him that cap hit this year, pay that cap charge this year, and then extend him for probably too much money, what he wants. Um, so it was really tricky, and that's why I still think there'd be no takers, uh, you know, my prediction, but... And the Patriots are really valuing tight end, and they're just beat up at tight end. I just think they're going to get healthy here. They have no major injuries. Uh, the Bills could use another one. Titans can grab another one. The Jags, you know, they move on from Tebow, and they're very thin at the position. The Chargers, they had a Jared Cook. They could get better at the position. The Saints, um, you know, got you know a young guy like Trotman potentially stepping up. You know, they could get better at the position, get another weapon out there. I, I just don't think there's any takers. You know, I, I don't know. Um, you know, in the Eagles price was too high before, but I really don't know if that's really the main problem. You know, if, if they take it down to that fifth round pick or even a sixth round pick, I don't know if that's even the problem. I think it's, yeah, he's a little bit of a cap hit this year. And then, you know, are, are we going to extend him? He's going to ask for too much. It's basically just a rental. So I don't know. There's a lot of factors in there. I still think no ta takers for Zach Ertz. What about Andre Dillard? His name actually popped up yesterday that teams have been calling. Uh, we were talking about on Twitter, uh, and teams have been calling about Andre Dillard. Uh, was a good prospect at a Washington State first-round pick, and kind of, so far has struggled on the field a little bit, and then with injuries a little bit as well. He may not even be listed as a starter for this year at the left tackle position for the Eagles. Um, so teams kind of, you know, left tackles are so rare to come across, so rare, and teams see this guy, you know, almost evaluate him at this point, still as a prospect, still has that upside. So his value is pretty tricky, uh, and that's why I kind of think no trade happens here uh, because he was just taken in the first round. Yes, he hasn't really worked out, so you know his value goes down a little bit, but the tackles are so tough to come across, and here you have one that's young, has upside still. So it's it's – it's so tricky to figure out what um, you know how to match up what the Eagles want for him and what the teams want to give up for him. But you know teams have called, they've called. You know it doesn't mean a deal is going to happen. But listen, the Panthers, yeah, they got a problem at the tackle position. They could use him at left tackle. The Bears have been kind of scrambling to find guys. They got a former Eagle, Jason Peters, but they it doesn't mean they're set. You know they could be looking still. Steelers definitely could use a tackle. Uh, the Vikings are a little bit of a messy situation. They just drafted a left tackle in Christian Derisaw in the first round. He hasn't fully practiced yet because of an injury. I don't. I don't think 
he's going to be ready to go to start uh, right away. And the Vikings are trying to win now. They're trying to put that offensive line together so they could. The Seahawks, uh, they got Dwayne Brown out there, who's a very good left tackle. He wants an extension. He wants a good amount of money. I doesn't really feel like at this specific time the Seahawks want to do that. Um, so they can grab Dillard. Um, it's not really saying Brown's going to hold out or sit out. Yeah, sit out games this year, but it may be kind of getting ready for the future. They're not maybe saying they're not going to extend Dwayne Brown. I put the Jaguars in there, and I could put a list of teams if they feel comfortable with a right tackle. It seems like there's a longer list of teams that could use a right tackle. So you know, if you know your team, if they need a right tackle, keep them in mind. They could take them, move them, to, move them to that spot. It's definitely possible. I look at the Jaguars as as a uh, Potentially doing that. Jawan Taylor just hasn't worked out. But, you know, keep in mind left tackle for the Jaguars as well. They franchise tag Cam Robinson because tackles are they're just rare. You can't really come across ones that have some experience. And they want to give him a trial. That's what a franchise tag is. It's just kind of pricey. Um, offensive line starting to worry us a little bit there. So they could take Dillard for either side there. Um, so that's a possibility. Again, long list of teams that could be interested at right tackle. Uh, I think no trade, though, because I think the Eagles probably would want more than a third-round pick, and teams may be hesitant to give up a third-round Yeah, they probably would, just because it's, again, so rare to come across these guys. Uh, it's a gamble. It's worth the gamble to them to them, to, them to kind of work, get his potential out of him, and, um, you know, get a starter out of it, because uh, teams are desperate for tackles. Uh, another Eagles guy. I haven't heard anything on Derek Barnett. It's kind of me just thinking. It's probably a possibility here. Uh, value, fourth-round pick for me here. Could be less contract year. Could, 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 could be a fifth. I got a long list of teams that could be interested. Uh, and what's interesting is they kind of reworked his deal where um, he doesn't have that large of a cap hit anymore uh, for this year. They're going to kind of pay it off in void years in the future. Uh, and that made him a lot more tradable, you know, that that's actually what that did. It, that I almost think that's what that the kind of what their what their angle was there. They they made they made his contract uh, tradable. You know, teams may want may he's more appealing now because of the contract. It's a cheaper cap it for that team. You know, and they have uh, Brandon Graham's obviously a starter, and they signed Ryan Kerrigan and Josh Sweat was a stud last year. Has a lot of upside. Uh, they have Milton Williams who can play outside and in. You know, I think. I think I'm on to something here. I think what they did with that contract with him is just a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that ago, but they, they, they kind of made it so he's a tradable contract, tradable player. So the Jets just lost Carl Lawson, and they kind of needed somebody opposite of him as well. They had a couple bodies, but they on top of that, in my opinion, I think they needed somebody else. Um, so they can, they want that defense to be able to compete right now, obviously, Robert Sala. So um, that's a possibility. The Falcons... You know, they're running more of a 3-4, so he kind of brings up the point of does he fit, but they're pretty desperate for somebody opposite of Fowler Jr. Uh, the Vikings, they brought in Everson Griffin for a tryout, so they're looking, and they didn't sign him. They're looking for defensive ends. I think Barnett would fit opposite of Daniel Hunter. That's kind of that last piece uh, to the Vikings' defense. That kind of feels more like a win now. It's already a win now. Defense should be good, but it feels you know, more like a win now defense. Last piece of the puzzle. Uh, the Colts are kind of lacking that area. Quiddy Pay had a minor injury, went down. You know, was it was that last week. Nothing to worry about, but they're kind of lacking that area opposite of him. Uh, the Chiefs, you know, Frank Clark with his situation, could use somebody opposite of him on top of that. So the Chiefs are definitely interesting. Um, Seahawks, you know, they could get better there. I'd say they're more of a wild card because they got plenty of bodies like this, you know, like Barnett, like they could be good. You know, they got a bunch of those guys. They kind of need that stud guy, but they moved on from Alden Smith. Uh, that surprised some, but, uh, so maybe they could try to get somebody in and the Texans, um, they definitely could use another pass rusher and, um, you know, maybe they can pull a compensatory pick out of him that have been trying to kind of do that by adding guys but uh yeah and I'm predicting the Jets actually I think the, again I think the Eagles reworked that deal to make him more tradable and edge rush is such an important piece teams are going to be you know they may trade fourth round pick might be a little higher than what people expected it could be fifth would be a great deal if somebody can pull that off um and the Jets they want that defense to compete now uh they needed somebody opposite of Lawson in my opinion anyways Lawson goes down so you need Bar a guy like Barnett even more I think he's a fit they can extend him for the future if they wanted to to pair with Lawson for a long time so it kind of makes sense to me uh, I'd say yeah the Chiefs Chiefs of the Vikings maybe next uh in line there but I'd watch out for Barnett I have not heard anything but I liked him as a prospect too so I would like him to kind of get a fresh start there um so we will see 
Uh, back to Lyman. This came out earlier today. We were talking about it on Twitter a little bit. Uh, Connor McGovern uh, of uh, the Cowboys, and um, he plays guard and center. You know, he's kind of a you know a lot of those guys are pretty interchangeable on the position position wise. Uh, and the Cowboys actually been moving things around a bit in preseason. Um, you know, you look at the center position. They kind of they put Biotish there. They put Connor Williams there. Um, who's gonna who's likely to play guard for them? But and he hasn't looked good at center. And they have McGovern, who could you know potentially start at guard or center for them. Um, value fourth fourth round pick, maybe fifth round pick. Not as we talked about the tackles being harder to find, more valuable. But it seems like teams are short on offensive alignment in general. They're the Falcons in there. A little, they're a little messy on the inside right now. I don't think they would use them at center. They got a couple young guys that are kind of competing for that center spot. Hennessy, Dolman. Uh, who they just drafted from Stanford. Uh, you're looking at maybe in one of those guard spots. You know, Lindstrom obviously likely starts, but that's a possibility. The Vikings' offensive line's a little messy. They 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 could look into adding McGovern. The Bengals, of course, need more of an interior guy. It looks like they're they're good. They they feel like they're good with their tackles. Uh, the Panthers' offensive line, you know, looking a little messy as well. The Ravens is messy mainly because of injury right now. They could use a guy uh, to potentially potentially play center or guard. They're kind of between. Uh, you know, Cleveland possibly playing guard. He has that, that injury, and they're probably going to move Bozeman to center. That's what they want to do. But a couple of injuries in the interior there. Uh, and the Dolphins are always looking for linemen. A guy, again, that would help him if he can play center for them or possibly guard. I think no trade. What came We talked about on Twitter what came along with the report. Uh, the Cowboys like him. They like him again. They're not, they're not locked in who's starting at center. I, you know, I feel like we know who's starting at the other positions there, but don't rule out him playing at guard. Um, you know, even if he's not starting right away, he could eventually be a starter. Remember the health of the Cowboys is the problem. So it's very important to them to keep Dak protected, to have a very good offensive line. But since their offensive line has some durability concerns, it's very important to them to keep these guys that he could start day one or he could be, you know, he's that, he's that good of a backup. But again, he could be, he might not even be a backup. Uh, so I think the Cowboys hang on to him. I think it may take a third, which I don't think any team does. Uh, but I think other, these teams uh, could be that interested. So we will see. It's one that was reported about today. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, and then we move on to Whitney Merciless. His name came up. Um, his name came up, you know, when and they got a new staff in there and they, you know, they, they wanted to move on from him because it doesn't really fit Lovey Smith's 4-3 scheme. He's kind of been a 3-4 outside linebacker in terms of an edge rusher for his career. Um, you know, and so they couldn't trade him. Teams didn't want that cap hit. What did they do? They reworked his deal. They turned into a one-year deal. It's lesser of a cap hit. Um, you know, so it, ma it makes him a little more tradable. But, you know, they've worked him in at 4-3 end, and, you know, it seems like a little, maybe a little more of a fit than we expected because we kind of, kind of viewed him as strictly a 3-4 outside linebacker edge rusher. But, you know, maybe he can fit and he can start for them, and they need all the edge rush they can get here. Uh, but I think if a team comes along and offers him a pick, I think they trade him. You know, I, I don't think they're, you know, it's they're kind of in a rebuild mode right now as long as Watson's sitting out. So um, if somebody comes along with that, I, I think they would trade him. Um, a lot of teams could fit the Falcons. I think he fits their scheme. Uh, the Jets, you know, again, I think a guy like Barnett fits a little better. We talked about that earlier in this video. Uh, the Broncos, you know, Broncos are set with their starters, uh, but depth is very, very important. It'd be odd to see Merciless riding the bench, but and they'll find a way to use all three of those guys. It's very important, you know. If somebody goes down, the Broncos are in trouble. You know, that's that's it's a big reason why their defense could be elite. Uh, the Chargers could use somebody else, an upgrade opposite of Bosa. Seahawks kind of looking for guys, uh, possibly. Uh, and the Rams opposite of Leonard Floyd. You know, I think some of those teams are wild cards. I went, you know, I was back and forth, but maybe no, I was no takers, or you know, they keep him, or maybe the the Falcons make a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, because I, apparently I've heard he's fit in a little better than expected uh, in terms of that 4 3 end spot. Um, so maybe they keep him. There was no takers not too long ago. So maybe there continues to be no takers, but it's a little less of a cap hit now because of that reworked deal. So it's a possibility. To me, the Falcons need another edge rusher pretty badly. You know, Fowler needs to step up, one, and they need somebody opposite of him, too. Um, you know, they got a couple guys that can play, but they feel like key rotation guys. You know, Merciless fits, uh, and that helps that def that they, you know that defense played a little better at the end of last year. Dean Pease comes in, very good defensive mind. They believe that defense can compete right now. You need another edge rusher, though. You definitely need another one. So this is something I almost think the Falcons, you know, I'm, I almost want to say they have to do it. You know, something along these lines. Not that specific. I wouldn't overspend. 
I wouldn't do anything more than a fourth. Probably has to do a fourth, but um, it's something that it almost feels like they must do. I don't, I don't want to say they they absolutely have to, but we're pretty close to that. So I look out for the Falcons and out those types of players. And uh, a name that was brought up quite a bit. We talked about it when it was he was brought up. C.J. Henderson, the Jacks corner, first round pick, ninth overall pick last year. He's an upside guy. That's why it doesn't really make sense for them just to kind of just give up on him already. It's a new staff, but this guy wasn't drafted ninth because of his ability to play right then and there. Rarely is that a case, a case for any corner, but you get a guy that's pure, you know, upside raw prospect. He was drafted that high because he has the traits, he has the athleticism, the quickness, he has the ex, you know experience playing man. He looks like he he you know he can jam people at the line. He can he has the technique. He can do that. He kind of has everything you look for. He got beat a, in at Florida a little more often than the other corners, so those corners were a little more pro ready. But hey, this guy's all the traits you want to work with. He has the upside, so he's you know if. I just really don't see if you trade them now, you better get some good value. I'd say a second round pick plus, meaning a second, and then maybe a third or a second and a fourth, or a late, late first because, you know, the order isn't determined yet, but a team uh, that is confident that they won't be giving up a crazy valuable first round pick uh, may be interested in doing it. If it's a team that, hey, we might have a really early pick, uh, we're probably not going to do this, you know. So a uh, long list of teams, I probably can more, uh, mention more teams. Um, yeah, I, the Saints kind of came to mind like right when this news came out. It's been reported that they kind of made that they they are interested. They made that call to sniff around a little bit. You know, Cardinals need a corner desperately. I think the Steelers do as well. They just made that trade for Schobert. Do they make another trade? I don't think they would be against it. Uh, the Jets definitely wouldn't be willing to offer a first, but they could use a corner. Seahawks can offer a first. Could definitely use one. Bills. I mean, we could start throwing teams like the Chiefs or the Vikings in there as well, possibly. Uh, you know, Saints probably the one to look for. They're, they're, they're scrambling for a corner. Um, they tried to trade up for a corner in this year's draft. They couldn't get it done. Here's one uh, that went in that range the year before. A guy that has upside, a guy that they can coach. They believe they well, they value that position high. They believe they can develop this guy to where he could be. So I think it's perfect fit there. I think he fits the scheme, uh, you know, how they develop, what they're looking for. Um, so the Saints would be interesting. I, they may be willing to offer a first. It's tough because how will the Saints be this year, though? Uh, I think no trade. I, I think this kind of got – I mean, it was interesting. You know, I don't think it got, you know, any – I don't know if – maybe it blown, blew up a little bit too much, but it was such an interesting topic, which is understandable. Uh, I just th thought, you know, it looked like – it did look like at the time because he was out for COVID reasons and um, they were loving Tyson Campbell opposite of Shaq Griffin and it's like felt like those were the guys. And they had they have Sidney Jones, they have Herndon, you know, they got a couple other guys there. So it kind of felt like, yeah, they, they maybe didn't – felt like they needed him. Uh, but, you know, he got some good action preseason game. Campbell gave up a touchdown with the twos. Um, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to trade him unless you get a first-round pick. So I, I think uh, – I don't think they trade him, and they kind of – I don't want to say jumped the gun because they didn't do anything, but – and they didn't really say we were going to trade him. It just felt like teams – teams felt like they could trade him, and they still could. Uh, but I, I think no trade and kind of answer the question, you know, why I, I, think they, well, I think they still view him as a starter. He's back at training camp. He's getting going. He got some reps in the last preseason game. Um, he's more ready, even though he's a raw prospect, he's more ready, you know, pro ready than Tyson Campbell now because Henderson's a year in, he was a better prospect. Campbell's also a raw, a raw guy, but he, uh, looks, looked pretty good in training camp so far, especially while Henderson was out. Um, you know, so I think Henderson's gotta be the guy, gotta be the starter. It just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to trade him unless you get I mean, you just took him in the first round last year. His value can't drop because of one year of play. A corner on top of it, a corner that takes, no matter who it is, takes a bit to develop. On top of that, a raw upside prospect. You know, the value didn't drop based on one year of play. I'm sorry, you know. Um, so, I, I just, it's, we'll see. It'd be pretty, pretty wild, and it's possible. Uh, but those are my trade candidates here. Um, I may come up some more. You know, I may, you know, I kind of digging around, see the Derek Barnett situation. Didn't hear anything about that. You know, I, I probably could find some more here that are kind of similar. So, and the bunch, there's a bunch of different roster cut periods, and that will kind of spark up trade discussions. So, we'll be back. We got all kinds of NFL coverage here in our Twitter, our Twitter first, constantly talking about these things. So, make sure you follow that. Link down below. Make sure you like, subscribe. Cannot wait for the season to start. Cannot wait for our in-season content. Hopefully you join us for that. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.